Karim, spelled K A R E E M, not K- I M. K A R I M. I am. Oh, okay. Nice. We have it. We have it uh, misspelled here. Anyway, uh, Alhamdulillah. This is a wonderful opportunity, ladies and gentlemen. I became aware of uh, Brother Karim um, just a few weeks ago, and um, he got himself in uh, some hot water with our brothers and sisters in the Uma of uh, South Africa, and. Um, and they have uh, declared him persona non grata um, and have exercised him from the Uma uh, as a blasphemer. Uh, this sort of thing, you know, this crazy religious thinking that people get caught up into, and it's a kind of a prison. Uh, in, in, in metaphysical terms, they're in prison in a dark light, and that's un- unfortunate. But... Um, Brother Karim's perspectives deserve to be heard, and um, I, I wanted to introduce him uh, to my students and uh, the larger um, audience who happens to find some of the things that I do and say interesting. Um, the reason being, there's a problem in the Ummah, and Brother Ayub has uh, identified some of these things and many of these things which he say also concurrently um, agree with what I've heard from other commentators, other academics, <coughs> other scholars, other imams, other, you know, street people, <laughs> taxi drivers and whatnot. <laughs> we always ask these same questions. I asked many of these questions when I first became a Muslim and was invited uh, to join the uh, ulama in uh, Kuala Lumpur, and uh, I was quite surprised to to see that I was, uh, in fact, an ulama. Uh, we we'll see, in the contract that I had with the university, declared me an ulama. I guess that makes me some sort of an imam. In any case, um, I was surprised about it and how easily it was done. How oh, I impressed one individual with the book I wrote, and suddenly I'm there in this wonderfully. Uh, exalted uh, chair as a research fellow at IIUM. And I offered many criticisms and observations that just anyone would say, if you use your brain, uh, with respect to the development of the Ummah since the departure uh, of our beloved uh, prophet. And no one wanted to talk about many of the things, many of the criticisms, many of the questions that have gone unanswered. And so I wanted to take an opportunity to introduce another gentleman who had the same problem. But I'm not going to say uh, anything more other than ask uh, you, dear uh, Brother Karim, how it is that you came to your position, because it's, it, I don't know anything about you except other than what I've just said. And um, um, it seems to me that you were probably born into Islam and raised in the madrasa system and uh, the current fundamentalist perspectives that are held sacred uh, by most of the people in the Sunni uh, majority uh, and as well as the Shia uh, people and whoever else is we can throw in there. But what happened uh, to you coming to, to, to bring you to this point where your own uh, flesh and blood, if you were metaphysically, is now throwing you out of the family because you're asking pertinent questions and giving and finding pertinent answers. How did you come to this revelation that something was wrong with the Ummah, something was wrong with what we consider to be Islam? Dear brother, if I, I may, I know you don't have very much time. No, you know, you're fine. limited because of your <laughs> limitations, as am I. Uh, we're a couple of old guys here just getting sicker and getting closer to our uh, our end. But what happened? How is How did this happen? There must have been a series of events or a series of discoveries or a series of shocking revelations that led you to take this bold step and begin to criticize uh, your family, if you will, <laughs> <All right. Okay. laughs> um, from the inside, you know, this is a terrible thing. I said, dad, that's wrong. You know, mm-hmm. you can't do that, dad. I mean, 
how did you get to this point where you actually criticize the people who nurtured you, you see, and now having them um, uh, call you a kafir, kufir, uh, blasphemer, whatever the case might be, you're no longer worthy of their fellowship. What happened, dear brother? What happened, inshallah? Uh, to everyone, salamun alaikum. Uh, I would like to thank Dr. O for allowing me this interview and to share my thoughts and my experiences with you. Are you, are you hearing me clear, Dr. O? Yes, yes, very okay, clear. Fine. Thank you. All right. All right. So how this actually happened, uh, you know, I've been, I've been hearing about this Quran thing a long time. I think it's over 10 years ago. You know, it, uh, mm -hmm. I, I was even invited to certain meetings with, the, with people who were Quran only. And because I was so engrossed in my work, I never took them seriously. Not that mm. I discarded them, right? Uh, uh, being in the field of comparative religion, and uh, I started an organization uh, based on comparative religion. I was uh, an understudy, or let's say, uh, I served under Sheikh Ahmad Didat for almost 11 years. Oh, oh. The legendary okay. Sheikh Ahmad Didat. I served under him mm -hmm. for more than 11 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, after he got sick and there was a lot of turmoil, uh, a few of us, of his students decided that we would start Ikra and mm -hmm. uh, Alhamdulillah in the year 2000 we launched it and for the next 22 years I was engrossed in that so when people spoke to me about Quran uh, even though I was invited to the meetings and things like that uh, I would listen to them but when I got back to the office I would get on with my work and never paid attention to them mm -hmm. so nothing clicked here at, the, at, at that time and I think the time that came that really opened up my mind was during the lockdown. And yeah. why so is because being a head of an organization, the president, the Amir mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of an organization, I had to set the example true. I had to set the example correctly. So to put it simply, I was a Pakka Sunni, uh. a proper Sunni. Mm -hmm. Right, and that is the basis on which I built the organization, built on the basis of the Ahle Sunnah Wal Jama'ah, and it mm -hmm. is something that I preached, promoted, and practiced. Mm -hmm. Now, during the lockdown, it was the Friday, if I can remember, it was the twenty seventh of twenty twenty, and uh, I got up in the morning as usual, and I was preparing myself, getting ready to go for Juma. Mm -hmm. <coughs> And when my wife watched me, she asked me, what are you doing? <laughs> so I said, I'm getting ready. I have to go for Juma. And she tells me, do you understand that we are, we, we are under lockdown? Mm -hmm. And that is when it struck. Yes, we are under lockdown. Uh -huh. So lockdown and I can't go for Juma. Mm -hmm. So am I going to allow? So is this a command of God? Whereby mm -hmm. now a politician who is advised by the doctors, who is going to tell me, what I can do and what I cannot do to fulfill my religious duties. Mm -hmm. So there was a paradigm shift. That is what uh, bothered me. Mm. Right? From a religious leader who would dictate terms to me, which I would dictate to the public. Mm -hmm. And now it goes into the hands of the politicians. Yes. And it really didn't matter whether that person was a Muslim politician or a Christian politician. Politician he is. And he is telling me, Ayub Karim, you cannot go for Juma." Would that make sense to you? Uh, so that is where it started from. So I said, mm -hmm. no, but this is not right. This is wrong. Now I started going to the Quran. I am looking mm -hmm. for Juma in the Quran. And mm -hmm. I'm looking for Juma in the Hadith. Yes. That is when the real research started. Now, within a week of doing that, then I started reflecting on all the meetings that I used to have with the Quran people. Mm -hmm. It was during that time. And then... From there, it, one thing led to the next, and one thing led to the next. And then I got back to work after the lockdown. I think it was the seventh, eighth week. And I went back to the organization as normal. But there was something that bothered me. Is that now I knew the truth. I could understand the concept of the Quran now. And there's no way I could stand and preach something that is non-Quranic or un-Quranic or anti-Quranic. Or anything mm -hmm. of anti-Quranic sentiments. Mm. I found that that then I would be a hypocrite. So the only choice I made was that, well, actually I was killing two birds with one stone, was that I was sick and I wanted to retire. 
So I said, why not now? Why wait another two more years? Mm -hmm. So I think it was on the 4th of July, 2020. Yeah, it was the 4th of July. Yeah, okay. We can't forget the 4th of July, American independence. I think that is when I got my independence. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so on the 4th of July, uh, I tended in my resignation. You know, I called a meeting and I said, this is the story. And as of today, as of now, I formally stepped down as president of Ikra. I stepped down as Amir of this organization. And I said, I will remain with the organization for the next six months, providing the next day, the coming in Amir, the handover. And it took me six months to do the handover. But during that time, I started doing more and more research into the Quran. And I found that, sad to say, Dr. O, do I address you as Dr. O? Is that okay? Yes, that's fine. That's fine. All, all, the, right. all the locals call me Dr. O here in Kentucky. Dr. O, all right, okay. Yes. So we'll import that brand into South Africa now. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> okay, so, uh, uh, you know, then I realized that uh, what we are doing within traditional Islam, I mean, uh, now the things that I used to teach, I have to withdraw, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, you know, I taught my children, you know, uh, mm -hmm. And now when I went to them and tell them that, listen, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, mm -hmm. this is mm -hmm. uh, not of the Quran. And uh, I remember my, my second son, my second son tell me this. Uh, I have a very open relationship with my children. And mm -hmm. I tell them, you all talk to me what's on your mind. Do not hide yes. anything from me. And uh, mm -hmm. that is why they could come to me and they could tell me things. And very my second good. son tells me, but dad... Mm -hmm. You taught you taught us all your life that this is what we should do. I said, yes. And now you're telling us all that is wrong. I says, yes. <laughs> he says, how do we know that what you're telling us now is the truth, is correct, and that five oh. years later you wouldn't come and change your mind? Yes, yes. Now that's a dagger in your heart. Yeah, but of course it is. But it's the truth. Yes. And basically most of my children, most of my children were of that view. And mm -hmm. I said, listen, now... You don't listen to me just because I'm telling mm. you, but I need mm. something from you. Mm. I said, I want you to go and check the Quran. Anything I tell you now, don't take it as the truth. Mm -hmm. You go and verify it. Do me that favor. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, my eldest daughter, she asked me, Dad, how did you come to know all these things as being true? I said, well, I came across in the Quran. And she mm -hmm. said, now you are pushing me that I should do the same. I said, no, no, I'm not pushing you. Mm -hmm. So she tells me, just as how you, at the age of 60, discovered these are the truth. Allow yes. me the time, and I will discover those truths in my time. Yes. And I had to respect that. Of course. I had to respect that. I mean, of course. Uh, my eldest daughter is a, is, is a mother of three children. So I just can't bamboozle, bamboozle her into anything. No, no, of course not. <laughs> So, but so far, Alhamdulillah, uh, all my kids now are actually reading the Quran. They are reading the mm -hmm. Quran. Mm -hmm. You know, my wife and I, we sit with the Quran uh, three times a day and we go through it and we learn. Uh, you know, just this, this morning, uh, we, I, I did a recording and I know, you know, uh, they have already declared me as an apostate. But mm -hmm. that is beside the point, you know. Uh, this goes back to the dark ages, you know, Christianity, you know, Bruno, yes, Galileo, Isaac Newton, and all these people. Uh, I mean, if it wasn't for them, you know, I mean, you know, one of the irony of this whole situation is that, you know, I, I, I recall going to one masjid and uh, the imam is using the microphone and he is uh, he's sidelining or, you know, down talking the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. you know, and I'm sitting there and I'm listening to this gentleman. And I says, but man, you are using the Jewish invention, the mic, to tell that man that he is he's wrong. Yes. You know, where is your invention <laughs> that you can use? I mean, yes. you know, this is one of the strangest things about this whole thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Everything about uh, Christianity, Judaism, Judeo-Christianism, you know, uh, Western mm -hmm. civilization, like to them, everything about that is wrong. And everything about traditional Islam is right. Uh, mm -hmm. but, but the surprising thing is that, I mean, uh, who invented stainless steel? You know, it, it was mm -hmm. not the Muslims, although Muslims discovered many things. But mm -hmm. now if you want to go for an open heart surgery, you need the stainless steel. Mm -hmm. It's coming from Judeo-Christian science. Yes, of you course. Know? So when we consider all these things, then I found in the Quran 
that the Islam that Allah gave us in the Quran is the Islam that our Prophet Muhammad practiced in Medina. Uh, mm -hmm. Right? And that is the Islam we are supposed to be practicing. It is not an Islam of mine and yours. Yes. As you know, we are Muslims and you yes. are Christian and you mm -hmm. are Jewish people. Although mm -hmm. I am guilty of that. I mean, I was a student of Mr. Dirat for 11 years. And for 22 <laughs> years, I took the platform and I did exactly that. I was debating mm -hmm. Christians. Yes. <laughs> yeah. so, well, what else? What else could you do? I mean, what else could I do? You know, <laughs> I wouldn't like to say that. You know, I was brainwashed by by, by Mr. Dirat. No, no, I wasn't mm -hmm. brainwashed by him. <laughs> Forgive me for that cough. I'm sure. Cold. So, mm -hmm. so prior to joining Mr. Dirat, mm -hmm. uh. I hope you don't mind. I'll give you a little bit of the background as to no, please, how I please do. I, I think our listeners want to hear your story, right. of course. So uh, before joining Mr. Dirat, I uh, uh, okay, I finished metric uh, high school in 1976, mm -hmm. and uh, I went to college. I studied chemical technology, and then I worked in one of the laboratories in South Africa, uh, one of the petroleum laboratories in South Africa. So. Being, uh, you know, doing analytical chemical uh, chemistry uh, mm -hmm. in the laboratory, and I did shift work, and then um, I on weekends used to go uh, home, like every fortnight or every month. Then uh, mm -hmm. we lived in the south coast in uh, KwaZulu Natal, a nice small town called Amzinto. That is where I was brought up, and then I used to go home. Uh, once a month or once in two weeks to visit my my mom uh, my mom and, my mom and dad, my siblings were there as well, and then um, I used to go to the Islamic Propagation Center at that time they were in Madrasa Arcade, and I used to get all of Mr. Dirad's books, and I used to read them read them, and um, I got engrossed by it, uh, you know I was taken by it, the arguments that Mr. Dirad was given, I mean uh, the very first book. I read of Mr. Didat was uh, crucifixion or crucifixed. Ah, yes, yes, I you remember, remember that. that. Yes, remember yes that. of course. That was the very first book of Mr. Didat I read, mm -hmm. and uh, I was amazed. And I looked at the the logics of the arguments, and mm -hmm. I said, "Man, this is revelation," you know. And uh, I went back into 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 Durban. I'm mm -hmm. to Durban is about seventy kilometers. So I drove mm -hmm. all the way back 70 kilometers and I asked for the complete set of Mr. Dira's book. Oh. And that same night I sat and I read everything. Uh, well, actually more than 50% of all his books. And mm -hmm. uh, now when I got back to work and, you know, during our tea breaks, lunch breaks or whatever it is, we all sit around and we talk politics. And although it wasn't encouraged to talk politics, but we would talk politics, we would talk religion, although even religion was not encouraged as well. But we used to have our discussion. And then here was Ayub Karim who was coming up with all those questions. And I became the savior of the day. You know, everybody saw me there now as a hero. Because whether it was a Jew, a Christian, or a Hindu, the questions I was posing, you know, this was like, where is he coming from, uh, you know, with, with all this? But I was getting it from Mr. Dirad's books. Mm -hmm. This gave me the edge, the advantage. So mm -hmm. whenever I came down to Durban, I used to make it a note to go and visit Mr. Dirat. And we... You know, we chat, we spoke many times, and then I just decided one day, you know what? Let me leave chemistry. Let me go and join Mr. Dirat. Oh, God. So I resigned. That's a big decision. That's mm. a very big decision. I resigned and I started working for Mr. Dirat, being understood mm -hmm. that Mr. Dirat, and for the next 11 years I did that. And then until such time, he got very, very sick, and then I was compelled to leave. Well, there were a few of mm -hmm. us who, were, who left. And mm -hmm. we started what is Ikra. And for 22 years, I've been doing the same thing that Mr. Dirat was doing. I mean, if you go and Google Ayub Karim, you'll find that there's many, many debates I've had with various Christian scholars. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know if it's worth anything today, but all I'm saying is that I wouldn't say that I wasted my time, although I do believe that I've wasted 22 years of my life. Well, actually, mm -hmm. I wasted 30, 30 years of my life. But I am happy in the sense that I found the truth. Yes. You know, and, and for this, I am thankful. I mean, if yes. you take a simple thing like, uh, you know, the, the video that I did this morning on Allah Akbar, uh, mm -hmm. it's going to shatter the minds of the ulama. It's going to shatter the minds of the scholars. Yes. You know, just based on the concept of Allah Akbar. And this thing mm -hmm. bugged me a long time. 
that I've been looking for the word Allah Akbar in the Quran. It's not there. And Dr. O, it's not there. It's not mm -hmm. there. So I am asking the question. It's in the video. I'm asking the question. Yes, of course. So who is this God Akbar? Because I don't mm -hmm. find it in the Quran. <laughs> yes. Who is this God? So yes. I know that uh, the ulama and the Islamic scholars are not going to leave me for this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's okay. Don't worry. So I, I really don't know what, what they're going to do, but uh, I still believe that, listen, uh, the traditional Muslims in general, they need mm -hmm. to know that although we say Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar for everything, where is it? Where do we get it from? Of course, mm -hmm. they will say it's a hadith. But to me, hadith is not the Quran. Mm -hmm. If Allah doesn't say it, I'm not interested in it. If it's in the Quran, I will listen to you. But now you mm -hmm. come and tell me hadith and hadith and hadith and hadith. You know, this is what destroyed the people of Moses, the followers of Moses. This is what destroyed the followers of Jesus. They left the religion of their respective prophets and they created a religion about their prophets. So the Jewish people created a religion about Moses, but they didn't yes. follow the religion of Moses. The same thing with Jesus. They didn't follow the religion of Jesus. They started creating a religion about Jesus. And the same thing happened to, to the Muslims, that they stopped following the religion of Muhammad and they started mm -hmm. of Prophet Muhammad and they started mm -hmm. creating a religion surrounding Muhammad. So each mm -hmm. of these people, they actually peddled, they actually peddled, they actually peddled, ped, how do you say this word? They actually, uh, yeah, they put him on a pedestal. They put the prophets on a pedestal. Ah, yes, 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 sir. Right? Yes, yeah. It's, um, <laughs> Hey, geography, they made him into yes, a saint. Yes, and that is exactly yeah, what they yeah. did. In fact, this That's happened a... with all the, all the religions. Yes. If you yes. go back to history, and um, uh, according to my understanding, I could be wrong, but hmm. even if you look at the oldest religion in the world, probably in Mesopotamia, I, do, I don't know, I think so. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But, but I mean, if you go back, you know, uh, in history, uh, if you look at the Mayan civilization, you looked at, I mean, even the Red Indians as well, you go down to uh, uh, the Chinese, you look at Shinto, Taoism, and all these religions. Sure. They all, I believe, they all had prophets. Because of God, course they did. Of course Allah tells did. us in the Quran that to every nation and tribe, they, He sent a prophet. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. all these people, sure, they had a prophet. God sent them a yes. prophet. But what did yes. they do? They started worshipping the prophet. Mm -hmm. Instead of worshipping the one that sent the prophet. Yes. And that is the flaw I find in traditional Islam. We are worshipping yes. the one that sent. Yes. We are we are worshipping the one that was sent. We are not worshipping mm -hmm. the one that sent the prophet. Yeah. And so, um, well, I think we're not even worshipping him. I think we're worshipping the Hadith. And uh, that's the... Because worship means to obey, to submit to obey. and obey. All so I, I think that's the, uh, that's the event. I, I, I don't want to hold you too long because... Uh, no, no, it's uh, fine. Uh, ...the time constraints. But I want to ask you one other question. We can explore these uh, questions and answers and the history and the development of errors and things that are correct uh, over a period of time if we continue to do these uh, interviews here, uh, dear All brother, right. which I would like to do. But right now I want to ask you something a bit more personal. Um, since you've been ostracized, has this affected your income? Oh, yes, definitely. Oh, yes. You know, the organization that I built, I physically built. Mm -hmm. Well, apparently now the new board of trustees or whoever the management committee is, mm -hmm. uh, they've, they've taken a the decision that according to the constitution, mm -hmm. which I was party, which, which I was party of drawing up initially 22 mm -hmm. years ago, was mm -hmm. that the organization will be run within the guidelines of the Ahle Sunnah Wal Jama'ah. Mm -hmm. And uh, they say, but now, Mr. Karim, your beliefs and your practices are not in line with the Constitution. So based on that, we cannot give you that 60% stipend that we allowed you. Mm -hmm. We're going to retract that. So I said, but how do I live? They said, no, but that mm -hmm. is not our problem. I mean, you either come back to the path that you were on and we will give you that funding. Otherwise, mm -hmm. we cannot give it to you. Mm -hmm. So I say, if a Christian guy that uh, comes to you and he wants, he wants you to buy him a loaf of bread, 
you are not going to mm-hmm. buy it just because you believe that Jesus is God. Yes. <laughs> you know? So, I mean, if you look at... Yes, uh, it's like so, that. Mm-hmm. So, so, so it comes down to, to being, you know, too traditional, you know, yours and mine. Uh, mm-hmm. Okay, yes. so... Um, so I don't believe the way that they are that they are believing. Sure, mm-hmm. it has affected my income very, very badly, you know, but uh, uh, I do have some savings. I will survive mm-hmm. on that for as long as I can. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, Alhamdulillah, you know, on the first appeal that I made, I received support. No, no, yes, the brothers out there, they, mm-hmm. they are very, very helpful. I got to conceive that. Very, very good. Um, very good. So I, they, they I, I, would like to, I would like to extend an invitation to our listeners to support you in any way that's possible uh, as, uh, as time goes by. And uh, please let us know how, if we manage to get any funds together for you, please let us know how, how we can get those funds to you. Um, no problem. Uh, uh, Doctor, oh, what, uh, what I will do for you is that when we finish here, Mm-hmm. Uh, I will email you my bank details and the PayPal details, but on mm-hmm. my on my uh, channel page the PayPal details is there. But nevertheless, uh, I can email you whatever details you want. There are those who are using the PayPal. Uh, mm-hmm. There are those overseas that are using the Swift code. That that works mm-hmm. fine as well. Mm-hmm. So whichever way, I'm sure we can work around that. We can find some kind of solution towards that. Very so, good. You you please let my good wife know because she handles all these details. Um, no I, I would. I would like to continue on a not irregular basis to to have these uh, discussions with you. The the purpose is to reinforce the same sort of revelation that you had and I had uh, right. for those who are listening to us, because the more the next and upcoming generation hear from us old fellas, um, I think it's 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 encouraging for them because they're also in a similar position. You see, they have nowhere to turn to. You see, and um, uh, if they go back to the Juma'a, if you will, they're not right. going to get the answers that they that, that they really need. They're not going to get the confirmation of the use of this this wonderful and beloved mindset that um, Allah has given us this fitra, if you will. So yes. I want to reinforce that. And we reinforce that with the uh, dhikr, you see. The, the Quran has its dhikr, which I call it his story. You see? His story, that's right. Yeah, that's what it is. And uh, But we each have our own little story, our own little biography, and people learn from the narrative and they, that enriches us. When, when, when you go to... Um, uh, sit at a family gathering, say you're at a barbecue and you're sitting around the fire and some old fellow starts talking off in the old days, he's telling stories. He's he's not giving you a dissertation. <laughs> he's telling no, stories. No. So I, I want I want to tell the story, okay, as much as possible. That's what his story is. It's the story of his beloved love for us through creation and through our response to creation. This is Islam is supposed to respond to fitra and grow and evolve that fitra so that we ourselves enter into the tree of life. Uh, it's not a difficult matter, and any child can understand these imaginations, which are not false, they're true. So mm-hmm. we don't need to complicate things. If we tell the story, the complicated matters, we have to look at them scientifically. You, you as a chemist know, you see, and I as a doctor know, hey, well, this wonderful creation is incredibly complicated, but it's also incredibly and mystically coordinated in Tawheed fashion. I mean, how do you separate these things? Uh, the Uma has reduced itself, and so we've got everything in fragmentations now, fragmentations. This, I just spoke to a Christian pastor who's fallen on hard times. I went to visit him. I'm going to cook him some soup today, you see, So, uh, and uh, go visit him again, him and his dear wife. And I asked, he's a truck driver. He drives truck during the week, and he comes home on the weekend, and then he preaches, you see. And I always like to go to his church where he's preaching. I love to hear him speak. And he knows I'm a Muslim, and I, you know, my perspective on Jesus is different than his, but that doesn't matter. I asked him, I said, what's going on in the country? Now, he drives all over the country. I say, you see, you got your pulse you got your finger on the pulse of this country. He said, what's, I said, what's going on? He said, it's being fragmented. 
people are breaking up into more and more segments of society. Sectarianism is just taking over. And um, the re even the religious, even within the religious congregations, they're all vying with you, e each other for power. This is all about power, you see. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, the people who have blas call you a blasphemer, they're in positions of power and they're abusing it, you see, because you don't believe like they believe. Well, this is ridiculous nonsense. And um, if you study some of the ancient cultures, and I have come contacts now with some of those people who still understand the oral traditions, and they've maintained them. I, I know a guy right now living up in the mountains in West Virginia. I I'm hoping to go meet him sometime. He, he gives me a history that's like 200,000 years long, you see. And um, so these, 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 these people, they said, well, you know, this, is, this division is that's just not it. If you, if you look at the this is not the way we're meant to live. If, if you look at a group of men, they come across a, a, a person, another, another guy's got a flat tire, they all stop and help him change the tire and get back on the road. And before they sit down, and before they, he gets back on the road, they sit down and then they, they, at one moment, they're all working together for the same purpose, for the same cause, to help their brother, okay, get back on the road. Mm -hmm. Then they sit down and have a drink of water or a sandwich or whatever the case might be. And then one finds out he's a Jew. The other one finds out they're Christian. The other one's about what, the Buddhist. And all of a sudden, they're at each other's throats. This is not Islam. No, definitely I mean, not. I and the Muslims should not. not be this way either. We should fix the guy's tire, wish him well, Godspeed, and everyone go home, peace, make love to your wife, have a good meal, and da-da-da-da-da-da-da, enjoy the blessings of our beloved creator. You see, enjoy them. This division has to, it's not going to stop. Uh, no. I think we know no, that. Most definitely. In fact, it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. You know, I was yes. performing an exercise for myself, you know, because people say that there would be 73 sects in Islam, out of which only one would go to heaven. Yes. So I was, I was actually, you know, physically, Dr. O, I was doing this. Well, this is yes. part of research. You got to do it that way. Yeah. You know, yes. so I started writing down each sect, each sect, each sect. And I was documenting it. And, uh -huh. uh, you know, well, I got news for traditional Muslims. We have passed the 73 mark. I guess, yes, yes, <laughs> quite yes. beyond that. <laughs> yes. So, yes. so that means that, that, that hadith is now died. You know, so I don't Wonderful. know whether they'll cause it dive or whether they throw it out completely. <laughs> but of course, they, they won't throw it out. You know, uh, going back to what you mentioned earlier on, you know, after uh, I mentioned that, no, Alhamdulillah, I am receiving support from, from Muslims, both locally and, uh, mm -hmm. and overseas. And actually, I was quite surprised with the amount of support I see, received locally in South Africa. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And, uh, uh, you know, after that, I received a lot of emails. I received a lot of emails uh, from a lot of brothers and sisters from overseas. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope I'm not taking too much of your time. I, I, no, I no, not at all. I, 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 this, I, I, I reserve this time for you, and you, okay, you continue as long as you can. Yeah, but, uh, but I have a bad habit. You know, when I start talking, I can't stop. So somebody has to tell me stop. <laughs> uh, I have the same problem. I... Seriously, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so I was talking about uh, a lot of people were emailing me, and uh, they actually want me to. Well, some people said I need to move to the UK. One said I need to go to Canada. Uh, mm. There were three or four brothers and from from the USA said that I need to relocate to USA because uh -huh. you have the freedom of speech. You can say whatever you want to say. Mm -hmm. But in these three years, from the time I, I stepped down as, uh, as president and uh, as Amir of the organization, mm -hmm. and I started doing my own work and things like that, uh, you know, the surprising thing, Dr. O, is that I have met so many youngsters, mm -hmm. young Muslims, mm -hmm. who are already thinking in terms of the Quran, mm -hmm. without me telling them a word, without anybody mm -hmm. influencing them or telling them that, listen, this is the way you need to go. I mean, mm -hmm. I met a young child, a teenager. He's only mm -hmm. 13 years old. Mm -hmm. And he's telling me things that goes against the Hadith. And he's telling me why we should only stick to the Quran at the age of 13. Mm -hmm. At the age yeah. of 13. Now, that's how what they say, is that? That's what they say Jesus did with, his, with the rabbis of his days. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> yes, of course. So... 
uh, in this short period of time, mm-hmm. uh, I've met a number of Muslims here in Durban. I've mm-hmm. met a number of them. Many of them uh, who are 18, 19, 20, 21, you know, and most of mm-hmm. them, they say that, listen, we just have to keep our mouths shut and do what our parents tell us to do. Mm-hmm. You know, otherwise, you know, uh, things would turn out sour and bitter for them. And yes. I tell them, no, do do whatever you have to do. But the thing is that at heart, at heart, those mm-hmm. kids are Quran only. Mm-hmm. Now, yes. what are they going to do? Well, you see, that is the reason why I don't want to leave South Africa. I, go out. I don't want to leave Durban. You know, no, I will you... stay here. I, w- mm-hmm. I will do whatever I need to do. Even if mm-hmm. I have to die in South Africa, here yeah, in Durban. But yeah, of course. I need to create, I need to create some form of home, some form of mm-hmm. solidar- solidarity for these people who are now yes. coming into this Quran only. Yes. You know, this is what I need to create for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are all lost, like how I am. I am lost. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, yes. we, we, we don't have a sense of belonging in South mm-hmm. Africa. You know, there's a Quranist over there. Well, you know, when people call us Quranist, I say, yeah, okay, then the Prophet Muhammad was also a Quranist. You yes. know? <laughs> <laughs> of course you know, he was. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And, and and you know the sad part about it, they say that that we give these labels to ourselves. No, 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 no. The mm-hmm. traditional Muslims gave us these labels. We are yes. Muslims. Mm-hmm. We are Muslims. Okay. Mm-hmm. They chose Sunnism. They chose mm-hmm. Shiaism. Yes. Right. We were Sunnis. My choice was a Sunni, not a Shia. But now I chose to become a Muslim. And there's mm-hmm. no such thing as that. You know, uh, it depends on what I believe. Uh, mm-hmm. People mm-hmm. going to decide whether I'm Muslim or not. No, man. I mean, that is, you know, that is living in the 15th, 14th, 15th century. You know? yes, and these people yeah. are living there, you know, they are living yes. there. So, yeah. so I want to create a kind of a home, mm-hmm. a, a kind of solidarity for these youngsters. Well, there are I many others as you. well. Mm-hmm. That is what I need to create for them. And uh, I agree with that you. Is my, you. That is my plan going forward. Let, let, you let know, your apostasy, let, let, let your apostasy act like a nidus, you see, around which... Yes, uh, yes something can crystallize uh, for these yeah, uh, sure, uh, for sure, the next sure, generation sure. Uh, i think that's a, a good place that is to, what that is uh, what i to, plan to do very good very good uh, well let's leave it there brother and um no problem uh, if you if you agree let's try to is wednesday a good day for you is, uh, these um, wednesday mornings or is there is is uh, do you have a regular schedule or because I would like to meet with you on an ir- a regular basis uh, to establish a sort of a rhythm. All right. All would right. you like to have but, it uh, once every week or once every two no, weeks? No, I think once once every two weeks would be better. You see, I, I don't once every want two weeks? to. Mm. All right. And it, it, uh, that's still open to you know negotiation, depending no on problem. whatever the circumstances no are. Problem. But if we establish a, a sine wave a rhythm, and you see. Uh, this rhythm is everywhere in creation, and if we want to create this uh, this nidus uh, for the next generation, you see, then we okay. have to be regular. We have to be reliable. We have to be trustworthy. You see. So and then, uh, every every two weeks or so. So what I what I do, yeah. Doctor O, every yeah. two weeks with me, perfect. I don't have a problem with that. Very good, very good. And uh, we, what we'll do is we'll, we'll do that every two weeks. I'll l- leave it to me to uh, sort of um, develop some leading questions. <laughs> and uh, I don't want to prepare any kind of um, uh, scenario or script or anything like that. With all my interviews with the people like yourself, I just Fine. like to let it flow right straight from the heart. Uh, exactly. Because this is what children need. And we're all children at heart, you know. I, as soon as I get off here, I'm going to go play with my wife, you see, like a little right. kid. So uh, that's what we do, okay? So we're all children, and if you come to, if you become this little children, you you can enter into the kingdom, and that's what we're talking about here, because our beloved prophet established the kingdom. He established the the template for the kingdom in the earth. That's what he did with the Medina constant. Constitution. Constitution. Maybe we can maybe we can uh, discuss that. I, it's one of my favorite topics to discuss the Medina Constitution and that example that the Prophet set, because that's the political example you see, where exactly. where both streams come together and then manifest. <laughs> the, you know, Doctor O. Now that you mentioned that, you know, yes, uh, we talk about our Prophet uh, being a loving father, a loving husband, and 
So yes. many other things our ulama and our Islamic scholars will tell us. I have yet to come across a single ulama or mm. a single Islamic scholar who will tell us that Prophet Muhammad was the world's best politician. Yes. Yes. The histor no. Western historians have admitted this. No, no. And Western historians admit it. But our own scholars, mm. I mean, seriously, have you forgotten? I mean, you can remember that he's a, I mean, the hadith is full of what kind of a husband he was. The, has, mm. uh, the hadith is full of what kind of a father he was. But mm. he's not, does the hadith not tell you what kind of a politician he was? You you understand me. This is yeah. He was the most exquisite diplomat that uh, I think the world's ever seen. Yeah, so exactly. um, yeah. let us leave it there, and maybe in two weeks let's have a look see at Medina again and what actually happened there. Dear same friend. time and next week. Same time next yes. week. Yes. Uh, not next week. In two weeks. All in right? two weeks. In two weeks. Yes. Of in course. two weeks. Okay. In two weeks. Uh, I will provided die, I that we both live that long. <laughs> Inshallah. Inshallah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you you get your uh, uh, information data off to my dear wife uh, Bina, and uh, we'll okay. see what we can do to add to our website uh, some sort of a contribution uh, page uh, for uh, your nidus there in South Africa. I think that's very very important. I have some other friends in in South Africa, some who agree with you, some who don't know about you, some who don't care, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, you're going to you're going to import Dr. O to South Africa. I, I've already been there. I, I did a, a series of lectures last last week or last year with okay. um, uh, one of my colleagues, and um, it lasted for about thirty weeks or so. And it started out with a, a, a madrasa uh, somewhere, and they all abandoned me by the end. You see, except for a couple of students, because it's, I'm just I'm just too truthful and too honest. And, perhaps too critical but oh, these things have to be said they have to be said not for the sake of the person who is actually um, working counter to the kingdom of God but they have to be said for the sake of the children who are coming up behind us so that they can see and contrast the difference between uh, the prison of revelation, I mean, the prison of, uh, of, of um, tradition and the, the uh, freedom of revelation, you see, and what Salat uh, really means uh, to maintain this uh, connection. So um, let us do this, dear brother. Let us see where it is that Allah wants to take us and take those who follow us. And uh, uh, I, I, once again, I want to thank you very much for this time and uh, for your uh, contributions uh, to whatever this revisionist movement is. And we'll talk about that again, I'm sure. I'm so sure. That and, been said I would, and I would Go also ahead. like to thank you for having me. Shukran You're welcome. You're welcome. Let me see. It's my pleasure and uh, my, my duty. Okay. Um, my duty, I consider it a duty. It, it's a kind of a sacred duty. I don't get all spiritual and superficial and supernatural about it. You know, it's just, yeah. hey, this is a job. When people ask me, when I became a doctor, and they say, well, what do you think about that? I say, well, I used to be a paper boy, and uh, it's just another job. I do my best at it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's how it is and and because i have that attitude a lot of people forget i'm a doctor you see i just i do because i don't act like one <laughs> okay, fine. So. so dear brother in two weeks inshallah wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh